Ladies and gents, this is the lowest, officially, the lowest 1v1 cast I've ever casted in my life. I have their ELOs below their names at the top. We have 71 ELO for Nico, who has yet to create a villager. Nico, please create some villagers. And then over here in the red, we have 22 ELO for Luca. We have Nico and we have Luca. They're playing a 1v1 here on Arena. Now, the purpose of Loey the Legends is to cast players who aren't as capable, right? But what I love about Loey the Legends, especially the really low stuff, is that you get to remember how you used to play the game or how you still play the game. Or, you know, like, for me, it's nostalgic to look at this and say, okay, these guys, they're looking at the game with way less experience than I am right now and see how they do it. For example, Blue didn't necessarily rush out villagers or even rush out houses. We've got two houses in the back area of this base. So put, try and get into the mind of the player. Try and remember how you used to play the game before you, or, or at least try and remember what little knowledge you had when you started and enjoy it. Now the map being arena is not a surprise to me. I don't know if they know of a favorite system, which we do have in our queue. But that's not a surprise to me because I feel as though arena is a map that, uh, Wait the oh, what what's happened? Hold on, hold on. These villagers have food in their hands, and they're now randomly walking over here to take a board. <laughs> no, <laughs> no <laughs> pain. <laughs> oh geez, so you lose the villager and then you lose the food too. What's sad is Red did know enough to research Loom, which gives your villagers armor. But Loom wasn't completed yet. You could see it researching at the time that the villagers were was getting attacked. So, interesting. Okay, so we've got... Like, Red Red is seeing all these different things right now and just, just can't help himself. He's like, okay, we need to do this. We need to take this. This villager heard about the boar and is like, oh, you need an extra one now? Okay, I'll show up. What I like about Blue, though, is Blue's got uh, a nice little start here with the lumber camp. Like, this looks like a player who's a bit more experienced in regards to a build order. Uh, taking the sheep or the llamas, I guess, first. A few villagers on wood. This leads to a very efficient eco. Whereas walking around, like, now walking back and forth all the time and the early stages can hurt. Okay, Red has placed a mill. Now, for experienced Age of Empires viewers or players... We're going to look at this, and it's going to be the same thing. We're going to say, well, now you're walking far. But I think, where are you going? Dude! The red can't decide what to do with these villagers. But I think for red, this is also for farms later on. That would be my guess anyways. Now, I think what we should do for proper immersion for this cast is we should go and we should, uh, we should add the big trees. Things are a lot more clumped up. And you have the big trees, and that's why these players want to chop them down. Right. What's uh, blue up to anything new? I've noticed that blue doesn't seem to set a gather point. Blue hasn't set a gather point. So all the new villagers just they show up here. But that's something that eventually you learn, and it's it's so helpful because you can set the gather point onto a resource and then just queue up villagers. So for blue, that that is actually creating more work blue and okay, the next thing i'm curious about for blue is will we see boars brought in or not <laughs> oh my god the straggler trees <laughs> oh look like look this one isn't even being chopped anymore but red just chopped it down okay red's like all right we're gonna go ah the safest lumber camp ever Okay, well, at least Red chopped the straggler trees to the point of getting enough wood for a lumber camp. I like that. And now these villagers, okay, they're going over for the next boar. All right. These villagers, he, Red seems very indecisive on tasks. It's like if a villager is on one task for more than two minutes, Red has to switch it. Like these villagers were on berries and now they're going to go over and they're going to kill this deer. The red just sees stuff and clicks stuff as it as it maybe should be. Okay. Oh wow, blue brought in a board. I completely missed it. I'm so sorry. 
And that's efficient. Like, look, this, efficient. This, efficient. In fact, worker efficiency last minute. Let's look at that stat here. You can see that red is far less efficient. Overall, but also the last minute. This is uh, last minute. This is worker efficiency as a whole. They both have 16 villagers, though. Who knows what their strats will be. What I really like for a low elo player in Nico is that Nico's Viking, so wheelbarrow is free and feudal, and then handcart's free and castle. I think free eco efficiency upgrades is always going to be good. Hmm. Okay, blue has just stopped creating villagers and is now behind and is now on the way to feudal. Okay. So the classic 17 population feudal. Ah, but this is good. Yeah, you grab the boar with one vill, you run. And then you can just start shooting now if you want to, Blue. I, I know Blue's going to want it underneath the TC. But I remember the old days where I didn't stress about that so much. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Uh-oh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, jeez. Okay, well, it started off really good, you know? One or two more villagers there would have died right underneath the TC. It also sucks because this tree's here. So if it, there were any more villagers out there, it would... It would get all blocked off, but that's fine. Okay. It's fine. Okay. Red has quite a few on wood now, which is good. Red taking berries. Red also made this mining camp, which can be used. Oh, yeah. You know red's going to click a villager to this side of the gold, right? There's just something that feels good about having a... Oh, okay. Never mind. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I was going to say there's something that feels good about having a villager on either side there. Look, Red has clicked these villagers to trees again. So Red chopped the stragglers and he's just going to leave them there now. And Red is probably going to be alarmed. It's going to be like, wait, what? Feudal Age and says, I, I should do that too. All right. And what I like about Red's eco position and Blue's eco position is that if they get their farm and wood upgrade, they have tons of wood for farms now, which is the stage of the game where you should be relying on farms more. Which is another reason why having that early lumber camp can be helpful. The barracks here, I'm going to just guess that blue will go barracks, blacksmith, market, maybe even stable archer range. I think blue's going to make a little bit of everything, would be my guess. No eco upgrades. Maybe not aware eco upgrades happen. Uh, scouts seem to be just auto scouting. So while these players are collectively below 100 elo, that's crazy. Two players, if you add up their elo below 100 elo, they do know that auto scout exists. And as I feel like as the game goes up, ah, okay, blacksmith is gonna block farm space. Okay, I was wrong in the blacksmith position. I have actually seen low elo people before build buildings in the back half of the TC, and it looks pretty cool, but not sure I agree with the blacksmith position. I would have preferred it to be over here. And now we've got a stable. So I was kind of right. <laughs> I was kind of right. You know, to be fair, though, doesn't it just kind of feel right to have like the things like market and blacksmith next to the town? Think about it. From a city building perspective, you don't necessarily need to have your military buildings, like your archer range, your barracks, and your stable near the eco. But a market and a blacksmith, these are buildings you would expect around the town, and thus the town center. Okay, we have houses now for blue. 20 villagers versus 21. Advantage to blue because... Whoa! Oh boy! Oh god! Triple barracks! And now a tower? Okay, we're going full city builder here. Full city builder. Alright. Sorry for the screaming, by the way. That uh, that caught me off guard. When I saw it on the minimap, I thought it was houses. Hmm. Okay, what's the plan here for blue now? Blue is going to leave the base. I bet you blue is going to take some stone or gold out here. No. Wood? Really? Forward lumber camp? Because, like, I've seen players take the golden stone in the middle. That way you save the golden stone for later. 
I feel like that strategy doesn't necessarily click with me as much when it's wood. Because there's a lot of wood. <laughs> this might be a very long game. Mm, horse collar now for blue. Okay, so all the new farms... Oh, God. Will this complete before or after? Oh, that's a horse collar farm. Nice. Yeah, all the new farms will have more food. And blue is basically like, you know what? I'm sick of not creating vills. We're going to queue up all of them. It has 15 in queue right now. Meanwhile, red's got zero. Okay, so I can see as blue scout is being attacked. There's the attack noise. I can see what red is going for, but I, let me give red some tips here, okay? So this here... Like math, act like I can do math. I can do math. I think I can do math. It's 400. Uh, I think it's 450 wood. Okay. That could equal. Oh, God. My math skills. Uh, Seven farms? Seven? Seven ish farms, let's say. And then you have to count the archery ranges as well. So you're, you're looking at like 10 plus farms if these weren't built. And then your eco is going to be insane, right? So, Red, you clearly want to have a lot of military buildings because you're ready to fight later, and that's good. I mean, this there's going to be a war, all right. But just invest a little more into your eco, and things are going to be looking good. Like, look, Red is sending more to wood now. Like, oh, I don't have wood. So that would just be my tip for Red. You know if Red ever sees this. Now, Blue is still creating villagers and still doesn't really seem to know about a gather point so there's a new villager and then blue knows exactly where to look for it which might be part of it and now there's another villager just chilling there new villager time and time again and then blue just has to click him back so like this to me is actually annoying me just watching it and i'm not saying that like annoying me in the sense that omg i can't watch this blue or you're you're a big noob no blue you're actually a much better player you're just you just don't know about that that would make you do a lot better things, I think. Aha! Look at it! Blue! Two villagers to the stone. A villager to the gold. A villager to the stone. Villagers to the gold. Okay, so we are seeing this. This is what I thought we'd see when we saw the forward lumber camps. And obviously having wheelbarrow means that villagers will actually run faster to get there. And so blue has no interest in taking any of the stone or gold. Again, this is the save for later uh, resource and also after blue scout got attacked blue brought the scout home he's just kind of hoping well hope it don't get attacked this is very much what ace of the emeralds did if you guys ever saw that video and yeah i figured that red wouldn't be able to sit here comfortably without three archer ranges and three barracks and now what okay red you do have the buildings to go castle age and you have the resources to go castle age what is Red doing? Get into the mind of the player. Get into the mind of the player. Get into the... Placing houses. Okay. Blue has definitely pulled ahead economically. And the longer those resources in the middle are being brought in, the better it's going to be for Blue in the long run. Okay. Mind of the player. Mind of the player. Mind of the player. Red, what, what you up to here? What's the plan? I swear we're going to see triple stable soon. I just... Please go up to him! Go up to Castle Age, please. Please go up to Castle Age. Red might not know the resources required to go up to Castle Age. But I'm looking right now. Again, I'm thinking, get into the mind of the player. And I think Red is just relaxing. Or maybe, like, Red's got, like, a toddler, you know, who just, like, ran into his room. He's like, go, go hang out with Mom. I'm gaming right now, you know? Like, comes back to the computer and clicks up to Castle Age. Okay, there we go. Um, as for, oh, oh, yes, of course. Supplies! Of course. What would a 22 ELO player's build order be without supplies? As someone in my comments the other day told me no longer, please, they asked me no longer to yell supplies or tootins or cumins or anything like that. They said it's turning them away from the content, so I'll say supplies. Doesn't feel the same, but that's what I'll say. Triple stable now for red. And the issue for Red is, how are you going to afford to produce anything out of these buildings when you only have six on food? Included in the six on food is actually two villagers on berries, and they're about to finish that. Hmm. Okay. I'm loving the farming ego for blue. This feels like one of the most basic, important things, important skills you have to have in the game. 
And while I can see blue, why blue is 71 ELO, and I looked at their accounts, by the way. I know a lot of people see this ELO and they think these guys are intentionally throwing games so they can beat up on noobs. Now, I looked at their accounts. There was no... Yes, they're losing streaks, of course. It, their whole playing career... Supplies! Their whole playing career has kind of been a bit of a losing streak at this point uh, with about, like, 15% win rate. But, um, but all that said... There was never a spike of wins, you know? They're like, they'll lose a bunch, they'll win one here or there, they'll lose a bunch more, you know? So these this is legitimate. And I could see blue 71 ELO, but I can definitely see red's 22 ELO. Because red hates villagers. Red does not like to add more eco. Red loves technologies. Elite skirm's not cheap. Bloodlines is actually stupid expensive when you've only got six on food. So for red, red's all about the buildings. And for blue, blue is all about the eco right now. Okay, we can make a skirmisher, archer, skirmisher, archer. That's what that's what blue did. Clicked every other. Boom, 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 boom. Now we've got, look, man-at-arm spearman. Man-at-arm spearman. Little bit of everything. Pretty soon, I think we're going to see scout knight, scout knight, scout knight out of the stable. This is adorable. I love it. Blue's like, I don't know what the crap does what, but I'm just going to make a little bit of everything, and then I can't be killed. I can't be countered. It's probably going to be a similar thing with the upgrades. Yep, yep. Click, 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 click. Get it all. Now, they both seem to know about the uh, university and the monastery. So, we have both players doing that. And um, still, you know, I call this the landing zone. That's what I talked about. That's what I said in my fat slob uploads because fat slob does this from time to time. We still have the landing zone for Nico's villagers. And again, this is, in my opinion, making it harder to play the game. <laughs> and Nico is smashing it right now. Okay, Red has added a second TC. Oh, so Red doesn't produce from this TC anymore. This town's finished. But now it's about expanding into the area beyond the gate. Uh, I'm glad Red is producing now. My concerns for red would be, see, we only have one eco upgrade, and you're up against a sieve that gets wheelbarrow and handcart for free already. And then blue knew about the wood and the farm upgrade, so blue's in a really good spot. Now what you should want to do here is you should want to get relics. And look at this from blue. So blue has actually queued up five monks, guys. And there's five relics on the map. Now at higher elos, what you would want to do is you would you would send your first monk out right away. I kind of hope that blue makes five monks and then clicks them all at the same time over to the relics. That would be so... Okay, there we go. Blue's going for it now. Wait, is blue going to heal the scout first? Because the scout is weak. The scout's like, you're injured. Is there enemies out there? He's like, yes, there's a tower. He's like, oh, that looks terrifying. It's like they're hearing about what he experienced when he was out there, you know? Yes, we should be very afraid. Is T90's jokes dumb? Oh, no, he ran away. That that answer's no. I think maybe Blue um, spotted the other scouts? I don't know. He's mustered up the courage to go back to war again. This scout is auto scout, by the way, so it's not really doing much. Hey, we've got two knights from red. Let's go. Also, red, red has gone for the farm upgrade. So I think red just doesn't know that wood upgrade's a thing. Or maybe it's very hard for red to see the lumber camp now that the TC's next to it. Hmm. It looks like that scout's going to attack the monk, but it's not. It's just auto scout. So it just, it just moves around. Everything's already been scouted at this point, but it continues to move. And so, yeah, I mean, for blue, you can kind of see that blue stopped creating villagers throughout this because blue is very focused on the relics. But this is a good strat. Now, if you look at red's point of view, red could look at the mini map and say, hmm, there's blue dots there and could attack that. But red is still focused at home. A lot of blue stuff out here. A lot of blue stuff. Now, going into this, if, if my memory serves me correctly, both players were on a minus six streak. I will have to double check those facts, but minus six streak. 
just looking at the resources brought in overall so far, you can see big difference, right? Big, big difference in food, gold, stone, wood, everything. And then you have to factor in where blue's getting the resources from. Blue's getting the neutral stuff. So if red ever musters up the courage to fight with these knights, it kills everything out there. Blue will still have access to all that gold and stone. Okay. We now have light cav. We now have, yeah, see, see, blue's thinking, let's just click a little bit of everything here. And so it's gone crossbow, and then it's gone elite skirm, and now longsword, pikeman, squires, arson. But the key difference here, guys, the key thing to learn, if you would be red, granted, red might not watch my videos, might never watch my videos. This is after the economy's there, right? So uh, invest into your economy, then you can afford to do some stuff. I would say the only way you don't take that advice is if you're someone, as Blue now has all five relics, is if you're someone who really wants to control the military and kill fast. So if you want to go for early night rush, or early scouts, whatever, that's all good, right? But then, then do it, because otherwise the opponent's economy is going to be better. T90 slowly starts to understand why the Emerald strategy is actually better and high elo players are just not smart enough to do it. <laughs> high elo players are just not smart enough to do it. I feel like I feel like that's I feel like you're trying to cope with something here, you know? <laughs> it's, it's like I just don't have the skill of the high elo players, but I am smarter. I don't know about that one, buddy. I feel like sending all these villagers to the middle when someone Whoa, what was this? Wait, what? Hold on. Has that been there forever? Oh, he deleted the evidence. That's funny. Okay, I feel like sending these villagers out here could uh, could also be seen as a massive risk. We've got 15 villagers out there right now. Two knights could wreck them. But I know you're joking. Mm. Like, there's a risk. But the thing is, you're not going to see... If players aren't taking advantage of the fact that you're out here, it's 100% a great play. I think it's funny how Blue deleted the mining camp. I like also like how the light cab is here to protect that. We do have Imperial Age now for Blue. And and the struggle setting in for me as a caster now, because I'm like, well, what is red gonna do? Because blue is better economic upgrades and numbers. Blue is relics, which gives you a lot of long term gold. Blue is making the most impressive castle I've ever seen with someone. That isn't here yet. <laughs> oh, this villager. <laughs> she goes. Is she going to build it through the corner in the wall? Are the gates locked or something? Why won't she? Okay, so this is a pathing issue. Auto Scout really wants in there. This might actually encourage Red to send the knights forward. You should be able to build through that corner, I think. Oh, okay. Never mind. She's like, well, I can't build that. But I'm going to make stone walls now. Okay. I mean, we've seen we've seen the outlook for blue. It's hoard resources, right? The blue is now making an extra layer of defense, which on arena I don't think is bad. And you can look at it this way. The middle stone paid for this. You didn't even spend your own stone for this. You know, red hasn't really been... Uh, I want to look at the APM real quick. What? Red's been AFK for 10 minutes. This is the APM. It shows the eco movement as well as the army movement. And red isn't even here. Red has gone. Again, my theory of maybe red is a parent of a young child and had to go deal with something. Red has just gone AFK. What's more important, family or Age of Empires? Well, for me, that's a tough question. <laughs> for me, that's a tough question. For other people, they're like, well... Because you got to understand, the other thing is, if you press, let's say, escape and bring up the menu when you're in the game, it doesn't pause it. Oh, listen, listen, listen. So if you do that against the AI, it does pause it. So there's a chance here that Red tried to pause and thinks it's paused while looking at that little pop-up menu. Or Red doesn't know that pausing is even a thing, which would be F3, by the way. Or... 
Red doesn't care. Red just doesn't care. Again, you can clearly see red's not moving at all. Has not clicked anything, has not created anything, whereas blue hasn't been the fastest, but blue is, you know, there. Hmm. Meanwhile, Blue's like, oh my goodness, I'm stressed out right now. <laughs> Minus six streak. I really hope I can win one. I feel like you know. Like, even at 71 ELO, you know when things are looking good, right? I guess what could be the problem for 71 ELO is maybe this is the theme of Blue's games. And then the opponent doesn't go AFK to take care of their kid. And they make a lot of military before you're ready. Well, pfft. normally I can go back and forth and talk about what one person's doing and what the other one's not, but here we are. I am still really curious on where Blue will make the market. I don't know if Blue will ever make one, but as Blue deletes a mining camp and it's just going to place a new one, I really want Blue's market to be near the town center. Duke, in order to get to 200 ELO, you would have to lose a lot of games. And I see a lot, I mean, there's not too many people down here, right? But you would have to lose a lot, a lot of games. So I think if you're going to see quote-unquote Smurfs, people who lose ELO to just beat on great beater, better players, I think that happens more around like, you know, you have a 1,400 player who might want to lose games and go to 1,100. Or an 1,100 ELO player who might want to lose games and go to 800. And those are really obvious on the accounts. Like I, as Blue still can't figure out how to build this castle, which is funny. I've seen examples of it. It's thankfully not too prevalent. It is ban worthy, by the way. So if I see it, I always pass it along. Red's still not here. Like in Red's mind, Red's going to come back and be like, whoa, look at all these resources I can do stuff with. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Red, what, what type of position did you put me in here? Now imagine if Red wins. Imagine if Red wins this game. But now, I think, like, as people have been saying in chat, it, it depends on your level, but... Like, Blue Blue is a very, I would say, knowledgeable player. Maybe just struggles with the capabilities. Because Blue got eco upgrades. is Maybe doesn't know what does what, but is getting all the blacksmith upgrades and got relics. And, like, that, combined with the middle gold and stone... It's pretty good. I didn't have any evidence on Blue's account that, you know, account like games were thrown necessarily. I mean, Red's been AFK for 10 minutes and Blue's only ahead by eight villagers. Oh, I so badly want Red to win this one right now. I so badly. But Red might never come back. I'm going to speed up a little bit because this is actually a recorded game. Blue just sitting here and Blue might sit here forever. Finally going to complete the castle. Keep in mind, hasn't taken any gold. Hasn't taken any stone. Inside of the base. Is working from the outer way in. We're going to have towers behind the walls. This will look cool. Okay, the monks now move out for blue. Getting atonement. Yeah, just clicking all the monk text. Like, I uh, don't really know what these do. Atonement means you can convert enemy monks. Fervor means your monks are faster. Block printing means your monks have plus three range. And then heresy is not cheap. That actually doesn't apply to your monks. That applies to your units if they can get converted by the enemy. Um, thank God for auto farm, I guess, right? Because Red's farmers continue to reseed farms. But Red continues to not be here at all. Which explains the 22 elo a little bit i don't know if his afk thing happens every time uh, i am by no means going to hop in and cast this person's rex but uh i mean here's the deal if red were to come back right now like if i were to take red's point of view i would go imp i would go paladin with these resources like this these resources are no joke right now Blue is investing into a lot of techs that aren't necessarily hugely relevant. And a couple trebs with 20 paladins could end Blue's night. Blue could die to that. 
Now, yeah, blue could make pikemen, could use the monks, could use the arbs. Like, blue could do a lot of stuff, obviously. But it's not as if these resources are bad resources. It's certainly a good thing to have. That much gold, that much wood, that much food. How does one play games against similar elos? I played a few games, and each time it's genuinely much better players. You have to play enough games. That's the thing. You have to probably commit realistically. It does depend on your elo. But realistically, you have to play at least more than 10 games. That's how the placement works. You have to play more than 10 ranked games. And then I would say probably over 20 before you end up falling into that sweet spot. Which might mean, like, if you're a 600 elo player, right? You start off at 1,000 elo, you have to play 10 placement games. That might mean it takes you time to fall into that spot. Now, guys, I, the other day, so I had a lobby up, okay? Because I was editing stuff. I just left a lobby up on AB2DE. I came back 20 minutes later. It was full with seven people. And they were all like, is this the real T90? And like, oh, let's play, let's play. And out of curiosity, I hovered over their names. And I wanted to see what their elos were. Because these are people who are probably frequenting the lobby browser. They're not playing ranked, right? And every single one of you, one of them, I kid you not, had played ranked 1v1s before, but had less than 10 games. There was like, you had one one loss, and then they never played again. There was like, four losses, one win, never played again. There was a lot of people who never, they never, it was like they tried ranked, and immediately were like, ah, dang, no, this sucks, and they stopped. Which kind of makes me sad, because... I know losing isn't fun, but if you push your way through it, as we have faith coming in, you should eventually get to a point where you're winning about 50% of your games. That's how ELO works. You just have to get to your spot. LMAO sounds like me. I have two losses and zero wins. Yeah, and then you play lobby browser games where there's no ranking system. So it's like it can produce imbalanced situations there. Blue is just making palisade walls. I think, guys, I think placement shouldn't be like that, though. I think placement should be based on, like, what AI you can beat or something. Like, wouldn't that be so much better? Like, what if, when you first want to play ranked, you had to play, like, a game against an AI? And how quickly you die or how quickly you, you win dictates your ELO. It, I don't know if other games do that, but I feel like then it, it gives you an elo. And I don't know what blue is. What is this? What is this? And I think that would maybe make it a little better than saying, hey, you got to play 20 games and you've got, you might need to lose a bunch. Hmm. I feel called out. Yeah. Well, um, red's still not here. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to fast forward more. Blue is getting every, all these different technologies, which is great. Has Elite Berserk with full upgrades now, which is now means the game is pretty much finished. I don't think Spanish can do much against that. Even if Red were to come back and be a god, that's tough. <laughs> Halo Infinite does something sort of similar, but results in cheesing. Yeah, I don't think there's a perfect system. I think a lot of people like smile at me in chat. If you just think it's really stressful to play online Age of Empires 2 and lose. And a lot of people are going to smile, which is completely fair and normal. But guys, my win rate, I'm a top 100 player. My win rate is like 54%. Right? So if you want to play AoE ranked and you want to win all the time, it's not going to happen. It, it is designed... To put you eventually, if you if you work your way through it, you might have to work your way through losses first. Where you're winning like maybe fifty percent of your games, right? That's that's how it's designed. So you have to accept there's going to be losses here. The tough thing is, I think, the initial losses because you're just like, well, hey, 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 Red is back. Red is back. Oh my God, he's here, guys. He's back from the dead or whatever just happened, and instantly cues up. A bunch of knights and a bunch of men at arms. He's like, well, we've got some catching up to do. We were AFK. Also, clicks Imperial Age behind a few villagers. All right. Mean, 
Meanwhile, Blue is, is building up confidence and Blue is starting to wall red in. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, and Red's not going to have it and Red's going to drop a castle here. I wish... I really wish there was chat. Like, I wish Blue could have known that Red was AFK. What if Blue wins this game and then watches the recorded game afterwards? Feeling like such a god, right? Feeling like, oh, I'm so good at this game. Let's rewatch it. And then instantly that enjoyment just gets ruined when Blue realizes that Red wasn't even at the computer for most of it. I'll still speed up a little bit here. Good job from Blue, by the way, to, to get production buildings. I like that. The Palisades and Towers are a little, a little unique. Maybe this is to create choke points. If the enemy runs through, they run through a one-tile gap. Like this here, too. I, as much as I would love to see Red come back, Red hasn't clicked a single blacksmith upgrade. And I just don't see a world where this first attack from Red, which kind of has to work, I'd say, is going to be able to do anything. That's true. Yeah, they probably don't even know about replays. Hey, I want to say thanks to Tim for the three months. Thank you, Petro, who's in chat for the uh, two months as well. I forgot to do the shout out. Sorry. I was AFK. Okay, we've got ballistics. Now we've got guard tower. I feel like guard towers want a lot of people click. Even if they don't have towers. It's like they think it'll upgrade the tower on top of their archer ranges or something. Um, does he have a blacksmith? He does. Yeah, it's right there. And Spanish blacksmith upgrades do not cost gold. So there is that. Meanwhile, blue is just kind of made has kind of made everything here. We've got Arbalest, Champion, Berserk, uh, Monks, Pikeman, Skirmisher, Light Cav, Cav Archer, Siege Ram, <laughs> Trebuchet, Onager, Scorpion. I'm trying to think, is there anything? Oh god, this is gonna be so bad. Is there anything that blue doesn't have that is possible right now? Everything out of the archer range there, everything out of the barracks is there, everything out of the stables there, everything out of the siege workshops there, the monasteries there, the castles there. The only thing that blue is missing is docks, dock stuff, and you can't dock on this map, so looking pretty good. Red went AFK again, guys. Red came back and had the highest APM spike in the entire game. <laughs> okay, this is funny. <laughs> this is really funny. So Red was like, oh, bu -bu 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 it was just real chill, right? Up until about 33 minutes, just leaves. Completely AFK. <laughs> Comes back for a second and just does everything possible for a short period of time <laughs> and then leaves again. <laughs> is Red at work right now? Honestly, is Red at work? I just imagine this guy in a cubicle. <laughs> and so for the first 30 minutes, he's playing the game. And then his boss starts like being like, hmm, all suspicious. And his boss like walks in behind him. So he has to alt tab. He has to get... <laughs> He has to go do his job. And then his boss stays behind him for however long. And he's like, oh, this is so frustrating. His boss walks away. He shows up, starts queuing up everything. And the boss comes back. Like, that's what this seems like to me. <laughs> it seems like someone's playing at work right now. And now just isn't here. Just isn't here, obviously. <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. I... I've never seen 22 ELO before, but I've also never seen this before. So it's hard to say that Red is a true 22 ELO player when Red hasn't been here half the game. Um, That's funny. Again, meanwhile, Blue is making a little bit of everything, which is pretty Lel-esque. And Blue, I think, is going to slowly go on the offensive. Uh, keyword, slowly. I used to play in class on HD. Yeah, you did? Interesting. Um, yeah, I can't say I ever played Age of Empires 2 during work. I have played other games during work. I used to work at a call center, and as I was talking to people about their bills, I would play Mini Clip Pool. I don't even know if Mini Clip still exists. Yeah, I'd be gaming all the time, man. 
Also, I did during high school, dude. I would sneak out of math class, and then I would go into the computer lab and, and go into the one of the corner computers where no one could see me. I'd game, because we had a way to get around, like, the school's uh, network. So we'd play, like, CSGO and whatnot. And then I would copy all copy the math homework from my friend who was actually in class. I was the perfect student. And I got good good grades. Easy. Um, all right, so we're going to continue to fast forward because Red is not here. I'm very curious on when Red will return and what Red will do upon returning. And now you can't count. I'm good with math in my head, okay? But everything else now, screw that. Um, he left when his army reached 69. Yes, I'm, I'm very sure that he calculated that. It's one thing to go AFK and never come back. Like, I've seen people do that if they get salty, for example, and get upset that they're losing. But I've never seen someone go AFK and then come back, create a bunch of stuff, and then leave again. That's funny. A blue's just got red surrounded, and he's like, eh, let's wait for him. But Red's not doing anything. Red's not even here. They do both have 41 villagers. That's pretty crazy. Obviously, Red has the less efficient 41 villagers. Okay, so here we go. Blue musters up the courage to attack the enemy. Is going to take out the wall. Okay, take out the next wall. You want a very, very big gap for the army that's going to run through, apparently. Fast forward, please. I am. You think Trebs normally fire this fast? Okay, Blue's getting ready. Blue is making a lot of military. Blue is a little scared. The enemy's been very quiet. Now can see the knights. I doubt Blue will click the knights and think, hmm, they have no upgrades. I doubt any of this is going to be checked. I think Blue is going to see knight and think, how do I counter knight? We might not even know how to do that, but certainly just the Berserks are going to be fine here. Okay. Red has not returned from work yet. His boss is still behind him. <laughs> or whatever it would be. Now, I think we can say one thing for certain. Red, whatever it is, it's very important. And yet Red still cares about the game. Red probably doesn't know how to pause either. I think that's a certainty. But then again, if you were to pause, no one's going to wait 30 minutes for you. So, Guys, I actually remember I was winning a game once. This was in 2013. I was new-ish to playing online. And someone paused. And I didn't know how to unpause. It's F3. It's not clear in the game how to pause. I did not know how to unpause. So this guy paused it. And was like, he was taunting me. And I remember after sitting there for like an hour and a half trying to convince him to unpause it. Because I didn't know what how to do it. And then he eventually, I eventually resigned. So, I mean, pausing might not be something that people know. Again, at that time, I was a little more capable than Red, let's put it that way. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I for one am shocked to see that Red... Is losing this fight with no blacksmith upgrades. And uh, it, it'd be funny to me if Red were to come back, like, right now. <laughs> if Red were to return right now, that'd be so funny. And you know how it is when you're new to the game, right? You're like, yeah, let's go! And you're just enjoying, you're just watching every villager die as you pillage the village and you feel so good. Blue's like, yeah, baby! Road to 100 elo. Let's go. Send in all the boys and girls. Red has been AFK for, well, now over half the game. And is still AFK as blue. Oh my goodness. Look at that peak. Look at that spike of movement. Okay. Is red going to be defeated? Yeah, we, we, we might need to go even faster, actually. Because blue is going to have to defeat red. That's true. Which would require... It wouldn't take that long. It requires taking out the buildings. And then the villagers. Uh, any building that can create something. So the production buildings are going down. 
Yeah, now it's just the TC and it's just the villagers. Oh, man, I would have laughed so hard if Red came back right now. Let me look and just verify he didn't. No! <laughs> Red might come back like six hours from now <laughs> and realize. What a weird game, man. What a weird game. I like to believe that Red is, is playing at the office. That or like, you know, had some pressing things to do around the house and just decided to leave. Congratulations to Nico, though. Does anyone else feel like Nico didn't play that bad? Now, I do think we, it's easy to say that Nico played better than 71 ELO because Red at 22 ELO was AFK half the game. But honestly, I feel like it's hard to know what Red would have done if Red was able to spend time on the full game. But I honestly feel like Blue played pretty solid. Like, the, the strategy was there. The eco upgrades were there. Everything was pretty good there. Um, now, I, I'm kind of curious. I don't know if I'm going to do it right now, but I kind of want to look at Luca's profile. And eventually just fast forward through his games to see if going AFK is a common thing. Let me look. Let's let's look at his profile real quick. Now there's no stats. We can't we would have to get into the game, but I'm still gonna look anyways. Okay, so according to AOE2.net, Luca is the second from the lowest. There is one lower than Luca named Krista. And Krista. Oof. Krista is having a rough time down here at Z or Elo. Now, this to me, this to me, at first glance, looks sketch. Because it's like all the losses came within a two-day span. Okay, and if you look at this, guys, you have 12.01, okay? 12.11, that's a 10-minute game. 14-minute game. 10-minute game. It's not as low as it would be if someone was immediately like resigning on purpose, right? But I'm like looking at some of these and I'm like, eh, I don't know. They're all really close together, which normally if I see a drop like that makes me think someone's intentionally losing. Now you look at Luca. This is not, I'm not seeing the same. Like Luca has, these games are typically very long. This is legitimate for Luca. Like the, they're on different days. Many of the games, if it's on the same day, last hours. So, anyways. GoPro Gambler. Yeah, GoPro Gambler's still here. GoPro Gambler has been here for a long time. GoPro Gambler, same thing. You can see, obviously, is low elo. But uh, plays a lot of games, and it is legitimate. So, he's been playing with Vietnamese a lot recently, apparently. Okay. 